I'm going to start the interview now. Okay. With this question and this <laughs> body language. Yeah. You play a double O agent in a James Bond film. Double O? Two years. Very young. I achieve that. Oh, Jesus Christ. How the heck does that feel? I don't know, actually. The world's moved on since you retired, Commander Bond. Perhaps you didn't notice. No, can't say I had. Sometimes I really feel it, and sometimes I'm like, did that just happen? <laughs> really, that's my genuine answer. I don't... It feels amazing, of course, but I think it's only real when I feel people's reactions to it. Do you know what I mean? So like when my friends say, oh, wow. And I'm like, oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah, that did happen. That's right. Yeah. I am in a James Bond film. I'd forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> it just slipped my mind this summer. You get in my way. I will put a bullet in your knee. The one that works. No, it just feels very um, surreal. Yeah. That's all. Really surreal, but quite amazing. <laughs> James Bond. We both eradicate people to make the world a better place. I just want to be a little tidier. I've got to ask you, where in the timeline of your life did Bond come in? Was it before or after Bohemian Rhapsody kicked off for you? Good question. No, uh, this was, it was before the kickoff. So now what? Uh, this is when the operatic section comes in. Oh. Huh. The operatic section, yeah. Which is great, yeah. I think getting all those awards only kind of solidified that I was actually going to do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got the call early on that said I was being considered for it, but at the same time, uh, I had to finish this final season of Mr. Robot. We have his address. We should just go. We'll get the info we need there. It's too early for that. We don't know enough. You know, everyone was concerned that I just wasn't going to be able to fit it with their schedule. Yeah. But we made it work. We took a, took a few days off here and there to, mm -hmm. to travel to London and uh, shoot as much as possible. And uh, it's, it's been extraordinary. I couldn't believe I was going from one royal family to another. Crazy. Well, I met you on New Double O. She's a disarming young woman. I get why you shot him. Yeah, well. Everyone tries at least once. I can't help but ask this. When you found out you were going to be in this movie and it was super secret shashi, don't tell anybody, mm -hmm. who did you tell and how did you tell them? I told my mum. Correct answer. And I casually, casually just told her, I think. How are you? Well. <laughs> what happened today was, uh, yeah, I just, I told her, I told her when I was taping for it, to be fair. Okay. And then I told, that was the only person I told throughout the process. So then when I got it, she was like, oh, of course you did. They would be stupid not to, <laughs> like not to hire you. And I was like, oh, thanks, Mum, for believing in me. <laughs> I've heard this quite a lot, that parents don't want to be like, I'm surprised. But, <laughs> but you want a bit of it. You want a little bit of, that's cool. But no, it's more like, good. Literally, that's my mum's face. <laughs> <laughs> I've been practicing. Yeah. You have a flow artist. No. How hard is it not to reveal things when you're in a movie that's not only a massively big deal, but is also about spying? Mm. How hard is it to not go, uh, uh, nope, no, I'm not going to say anything? That's so funny. Um, I'm actually really good at it. I'd say that's one of my skills. It's on the CV. Yeah, right at the top. Uh -huh. Just bumped everything else. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm good at keeping secrets. And I personally just don't like spoiling things for other people. Sure. People ask because they think they want to know when really you want to be surprised in the cinema, in my opinion. Only your skills die with your body. And life is all about leaving something behind, isn't it? You're playing a villain in a Bond movie, which is obviously an excellent sentence for you to hear. It's very cool. <laughs> but you can't really talk much about your role, naturally, because we kind of don't want to know. No, you don't want to know. It's a, it's a great way to, to pose that question. I wouldn't want to give anything away, even if I was at liberty to. There, there'd be no point, because it's so enticing and exciting. He is a villain, I feel, unlike any you've seen before. And there is quite a, a power to him that demands to be seen on the big screen in the moment and to be discovered for oneself. 
Perfect. Let's just let's just say, in some respects, he considers himself equally as heroic as James Bond himself. So here I am, their invisible god, sneaking under their skin. You know that history isn't kind to those who play God, and you don't. Can I ask you about finding the character and finding the accent? Because it's very easy, like when people do impressions of Bond villains, to do the whole like cat stroking, ridiculous thing. How do you find that line between playing a Bond villain and playing a less heightened human? So I shouldn't have stroked the cat. Correct. You can have a cat there. You can have it. Just don't stroke. Just the don't cat. stroke it. <laughs> you know, it is a fine line because. I know as an audience member, I go into those films and I suspend my disbelief. I mean, there are some things you're going to see in a Bond film that are, you know, unnatural, sure. so to speak. What I wanted this character to display was essentially this feeling that he was real and what he could do was absolutely possible and plausible. Bond, you don't mind a shot or two whilst at work, shall we? Well, I haven't had a drink for three or four hours. Hours. Wow. Doesn't sound like you. <clears throat> what does being in this film mean to you? It means change for me, and I've been very fortunate to be a part of projects in my career that have been full of change and full of pushing things forward. About to show these boys how we do it. You ready? Higher, further, faster, baby. That's right. <laughs> but this one in particular has brought something that has gravitas, but also has a newness that should be normal and is almost playing as though the newness and the change that is still happening has already happened. That's what I love about the decisions in this story in every way, whether that be the script, how it's shot, the costumes, everything is spun on his head. So when we watch it, it will be like living in the world that we imagine hmm. the world will be like, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, I can't wait for that. I know, me too. License to kill. History of violence. I could be speaking to my own reflection. Can I ask you about working with Daniel? Because obviously this is his last film. There's an element of kind of ceremony. Like this is kind of putting a bow on the whole five movie series. What was it like working with him? How would you describe his uh, acting style? I'm incredibly talented and beyond professional. I mean, one thing you love to see is an actor who flies out of their trailer to go to set, uh, whether it's on a bicycle, as he does sometimes, or he's uh, you know racing in a perfectly tailored suit, he's in command. Name? Bond. James Bond. For me, it's Daniel's best performance yet. For me. Those are big words. Yeah. I very much was conscious about watching him in scenes. I had to kind of reel myself back and not just stare at his performance because it was so good. And that's not me blowing smoke. It actually was like, wow, I can't believe Anne cut. Shana, can you concentrate? <laughs> when her secret finds its way out, it'll be the death of you. It was a really joyous experience. You, you could feel that he was genuinely happy to be there. And you might have hear otherwise in the media, but that was not the case. But it was, uh, it was a great privilege to work with him. He is 007. When you step on set and watch him right in front of you, wielding that weapon and in uniform, you, you get the impression that uh, this is a force to be reckoned with. Goosebumps, I bet. Yes, very much so. You seem like a man who's gagging for some action, Mr. Bond. Shall we? Cut to the chase. I feel like he is, and we can casually say this now, the best Bond there's been. Well done, yep. Great, thank you. You're welcome. We're on the same page here. Yep. I'm here as a professional courtesy. Well, you're not very courteous, are you? You've broken my car. It's Commander Bond. You know that. What is it about his take on the character that is so good, would you say? Grit. Grit. Yep. As a young Brit, coming up in the industry, all I really wanted to see was like real, like gritty drama something that was like a little bit scary, but also amazing to watch, but also, should I be enjoying this? This is quite a lot, but wow, look how it unfolds. And I think that the way he played it from C Casino Royale to now has been 
slightly on the edge. Mm. You've seen the issues he's been going through. You've seen how he loves and how he tackles his love. You've seen how him and Em's relationship has just gone from, I don't know, one place to another place. Yep. And you're just like, <laughs> you're, you're not here to please. You are here to just do the job the way that you know how, which for me is exciting because you're just pushing every boundary possible. I thought you two would get along. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. You can listen to my Radio 1 movies and TV podcast screen time on BBC Sounds. And you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum.